Very good. I'm an experienced clapper. You're going to be taking pictures over Soviet territory. Steven Spielberg's new film is a real-life Cold War thriller about a downed American U-2 pilot, Gary Powers, and the intrigue involved in spiriting him back to the West. You're an American. You could well be detained. Definitely stay away from the wall. I had absolutely no idea that this story ever took place. I knew about Gary Powers. I think everybody, every American knew that Gary Powers had been shot down and he had been held for a time in the Soviet Union, but um, did not know about the uh, spy swap or about James B. Donovan or anything else. The rule book. We call it the Constitution, and we agree to the rules, and that's what makes us Americans. It's all that makes us Americans, so don't tell me there's no rule book, and don't nod at me like that, you son of a bitch. James Donovan, a lawyer who acted as the middleman in a spy swap, is played by Tom Hanks as an all-American family man. Not my idea. Scotland, a fishing expedition. What kind of fishing trip, Jim? Salmon fishing. Tom Hanks Tom is the kind of moral center of the film. Some, uh, perhaps slightly unkind people, have said he's, he's a little too Norman Rockwell in this. Well, there is no story without, you know, the character that he plays. And the character he plays, he's never quite played anybody like that before. I mean, Tom has, you know, played, you know, men of principle and, you know, high moral fiber. But he's never played this kind of a ruffian, this kind of a take-no-prisoners bulldog. Have you represented many accused spies? This will be a first for the both of us. You should be careful. Where Mark Rylance got involved, I saw Twelfth Night and uh, Jerusalem, and I was a huge fan of him in theater. And I had offered him Empire of the Sun when he was 23 years old to play one of the principal characters, and he turned me down because he, he, he chose theater over film in the late 80s. And yet you forgave him. Oh, I don't, it's not about That's forgiving. That's very benign. He made a good you. choice. He made a very good choice. He, he, he's, he's, he loves theater. He's devoted his life to it. I just simply uh, said, I'm going to try a second time to see if we'll play uh, Rudolph Abel. And he said yes. Is there any outcome here where I'm not either detained or shot? The next mistake our countries make could be the last one. Now, a contemporary audience will see this, it's about the Cold War, but they may well be thinking of Guantanamo, Abu Ghraib, maybe Edward Snowden. Have you told that story via the back door, as it were? No, I came through the front door on this movie and I told all the front door stories. And the back door story, I absolutely acknowledge that there are all kinds of relevant parallels to things that are happening today that happened then. Um, I, I certainly, you know, can't avoid the fact that, you know, we're spying on each other, we're cyber spying on each other, um, you know, more than ever before. You know, uh, there's, there's all kinds of uh, drone overflights taking place today. There were U-2 overflights taking place in the 50s and 60s. So there's a lot of parallels, and, and in, a, in a sense, all that made this story more relevant for me in the current context, but um, didn't convince me to direct it because there was relevance. What convinced me to direct it was, it's just a bloody good story. Why are we hanging him? In the name of God, why are we hanging him? Sit down. He's a spy. He's killing us with the lies. Are you comfortable with America's role in the world? The surveillance operations that go on, her policy in the Middle East. There was no real, you know, uh, message in Bridge of Spies that I was, you know, I was championing. I, you know, I, I didn't make the movie to, you know, to push my own political agenda out there because my politics are subliminal through my work. I did it more with Schindler's List, you know, who I was, you know, was relevant through the, the, the what, I, what I believed in and how strongly I felt it came through in Schindler's List. Danke, look at the snow, look at the snow, look at the snow. I lost the worker. I expect to be compensated. File a grievance with the economic office. It's your right. Would it do any good? Of course not. <laughs> a big shot from the SS budget and construction office came to Lange and he told us that to believe the Jewish skilled worker had a place in Reich economics was a treasonable idea. If you have a political agenda and you really want to turn some heads and change some hearts and minds to believe in the direction you're believing. Television is the greatest, you know, conduit for that because it reaches more people. 
Now, and, you're not just talking too. about our show there, are you? <laughs> I'm talking about Bless all you, television. Your okay. show, too. Will you be festooning your Chevy with Donald Trump bumper stickers, do you imagine? or What, what does that mean, festooning my Chevy? Well, uh, bumper stickers. You Will you be all my out? My Tesla. For... You mean my Tesla. Uh, whatever you're driving. My electric days. car. Yes, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> kidding. I didn't imagine you ran an old pickup. But what about the Donald, as people persist in calling him? There's a future biopic there, if nothing else, isn't as, there? A future biopic? Well, I, I, I think that what will determine the viability and the, com the, the commerciality of a future biopic will be the outcome in 2016. And what would you say about the outcome? Where's your money? The, uh, it, uh, my, the history will, will, will tell us what the outcome is. I'm, I'm not going to take a position on that right now, except as you, everybody knows, I'm a supporter uh, of Hillary Clinton. This is the BBC, an organ yeah. of record. So yeah. here you can speak freely about okay. the actor who's been the biggest, who's given you most issues on set, yeah. not counting sharks. No, well, no, sharks have given me a big issue on set. The one shark, well, actually, you've answered my own question. That's the best answer to that question. The shark broke down uh, because of, you know, uh, mechanical problems, actually beyond our control. And I just went ahead and made the movie anyway, using the ocean as the nemesis, or as, at least as, as the threat. And I think it cranked up the suspense a lot more. That shark was a complete prima donna and, and just would not come out of its dressing room. Its dressing room happened to be the Atlantic Ocean. But we could not get the shark to make an appearance. And I think in a sense, because the shark didn't show up, the shark's uh, uh, a no-show saved the movie. You're gonna need a bigger boat. 